morning in the chat. And just a reminder, we do record these conversations and they're all logged every week. We provide a digest uh, because we've been having so many rich co community conversations. These are really important conversations that we know help us right now, but will also help us in the future. So it's great that we're able to archive them and we thank Kelsey and Tracy for getting those up. Uh, so always be on the lookout for your weekly digests. And today is Monday. So that means we hear from our friends from DC Public Schools and hopefully we'll be able to hear from David Markey from the commission. He apologizes, he had a meeting that, he, that got booked. Um, I'm sure as you all can imagine, he is super busy right now. Um, and he got a meeting that is booked in the first half of this conversation. So if that meeting does end on time, he'll be able to join us. Um, but uh, let's, uh, I guess, get the conversation started with an update on where we are. Uh, and before Mary uh, joins us and shares out, just a couple things. Uh, I'm sure you all saw that schools, the mayor did call it uh, as we were anticipating, uh, and the schools will close on May 29th. So the school year will end early, and that means distance learning continues through May 29th. Some things that we as a community need to think about, and I pump this up to all of you, but also especially to Mary and the DCPS arts team, we need to think about how can we help our educators, not only now through May 29th, but also as we plan for what next school year looks like, because it's going to be a strange year. Next year will also be a strange year. Um, you know, all indications are that the DC area is going to peak sometime mid-July. I think they're still putting those numbers out, even though we hear about communities surrounding us wanting to open up business early without getting into the politics of that. Um, you know, that aside, we do have to think about what our new norm is through the summer, as well as the new school year. And we should get a head start on thinking about the new school year now. Um, knowing that it's it's not going to be a normal school year either uh, in the fall. So just wanted to plant that seed because I think one of our Zoom chat community conversations should address just that. Also, another Zoom chat conversation should address what we as members can do, knowing that that is most likely the case uh, and how we continue to make robust virtual connectivity, how we partner with school educators in doing that work. Um, just had a very insightful conversation with our board president, uh, co-president Barbara Stouffer, who uh, heads up education at the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. And one of the things that even large institutions are thinking of, as well as smaller, what do these virtual education opportunities really look like and how engaging can they be? How accessible are they? Uh, and maybe there are ways now for us to be thinking about how we actually truly collaborate, where a Smithsonian institution is collaborating with a local DC organization or DC educators to produce new material and content moving forward. So uh, I'd like for the collaborative, as soon as we can on one of our upcoming Zoom chats, to talk about that as well. Like how do we truly collaborate? Because now more than ever, we really need to. So. Um, with that in mind and having planted that seed, I'd like to hand the mic over to Mary uh, to share with us how she's doing this week and what the next couple of weeks are looking like for DCPS. Good morning, everyone. You'll have to forgive uh, background noises of little boys. I, I have my two little boys with me this morning. So. <laughs> but so good to see and hear you all. Um, and thank you, Lissa, for the opportunity to engage with our community again. Um, so yes, we are uh, ending school May 29th. Um, as far as we know, the grading period is going to change over on at the end of April, but we don't have anything clear yet on what that will look like. Uh, term three was um, slated to be an enrichment term, um, so grades couldn't go down, they could only go up. 
And we're not sure if uh, term four of the year is gonna be similar or if we'll follow other districts and go pass fail, that sort of thing. Um, so where we are now, we just finished creating weeks six and seven. And we are moving forward with eight and nine. And then week 10 will probably be with the school because that's the last week of the school year. Um, and that is really where we are. We've been creating a great curriculum that we think is engaging. Um, we're getting positive feedback from teachers. And then the teachers are creating really great videos to help support. Uh, if you haven't been on the DCPS YouTube channel, please do so. You can see what we've created. The only thing up right now is weeks four and five, but weeks six and seven should be up in the next week or so to uh, go in line with the curriculum. And we've been working with all of our great partners like the Smithsonian and Washington Performing Arts to uh, supplement what we're able to offer. We, had, uh, we have a grant from Mr. Holland's Opus for some keyboards for our teachers. We're trying to figure that out because the original vendor that was supposed to send us all the keyboards just furloughed all their workers. So it's one of those things like we're all encountering you one step forward, a couple steps back. Um, so now trying to figure out how that's gonna work out. But uh, otherwise, um, that is pretty much where we are, is just figuring out how to finish out the year, setting up what our online uh, piece will look like moving into next year. Um, so as Lisa was talking about, looking into what does the fall look like. Um, you know, the mayor mentioned that we might go to school three weeks early, so beginning of August, but that's a big if. They haven't decided on that. Um, and we are already moving some of our curriculum onto the Canvas website, which uh, is where it really lives anyway, but we've been mostly working our distance learning through Microsoft Teams. Um, so we're gonna start slowly making that transition back to Canvas so that we can have that long-term assessment piece added in. And I think that's about it. Thanks, Mary. Um, yeah, that's about it. That's a lot, <laughs> indeed. And that's a lot of pivoting and changing sands. You know, every day we shift a little differently. We have to be so adaptive and resourceful right now stay on some sort of steady course, but also thinking and planning ahead, looking at a lot of variables and options. Uh, but certainly if the school year does start early, we all need to help be ahead of that. That impacts so many things. You know, summer camps are gonna be impacted, we already know that for, for, the COVID, for COVID reasons. But then if even best case scenario, if things do improve and get better, and school does end up starting early, what does that look like? That also impacts what summer camp could look like, right? Because some of us that do summer camp have to think about that. If school starts early, what does that mean? What does any, what does any of this mean? <laughs> Existential crisis, oh no. So that aside and keeping our wits and our health in check, um, what are some of the things folks that you're thinking about, maybe you could share out with your organization, uh, what your organizations are up to, um, and thinking about what Mary just shared that could be beneficial for DCPS, um, both now through the end of this year and looking at summer into an early start, potential early start in the fall, or summer, I should say. Would anyone like to jump in? Sure, I will. Uh, uh, hi, Tracy and everyone. It's uh, Paul Reisler from Kid Pan Alley. Uh, we've been doing- Paul, can you speak up just a smidge? I, I don't know about everyone else, I couldn't hear you. Let yeah? Me, let me move my mic. Uh, ah, yeah. better, better. Yeah, much better. Sorry about that. Um, we're doing uh, online songwriting uh, workshops for kids where they can sign up uh, and it's free. Uh, uh, they are two one hour sessions. We're also doing concerts for younger children, uh, K through two. Uh, and we're doing these every week. Uh, and those have, uh, w both things have worked really well for us. Uh, and uh, we started something last night, which was quite interesting uh, for us. We, uh, we live out in Rappahannock County in Virginia, which is, you know, about an hour and a half west of D.C. And a lot of great artists here. Uh, and we started a local concert series online with a virtual audience. So it feels like a uh, house concert. Uh, 
And so there are like 25 people in the audience, plus the musicians who are performing all from, you know, their separate places. And then we broadcast it live on Facebook. Uh, and that might be an interesting thing for you all to be doing if you wanted to have some of your artists, uh, you know, reach into the community like that. I'd be happy to share how we did all that. Thank you, Paul. I would love uh, to see those videos. If you wouldn't mind sending me the link, and if you have already, I'm so sorry to ask for it twice. We've been going through a lot of emails. <laughs> That's fine. I will go ahead and send them to you. And if anyone's interested in, uh, 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 just go to uh, kidpanalley.org/online uh, for the things for the kids and kidpanalley-hconcert. Uh, for the things for adults. And, uh, you know, if anybody has any questions, uh, just send me an email. Anyway, thanks for all that you all are doing. I've learned a lot from uh, watching this uh, when I can, when I have a chance to uh, come in and see some of your sessions here. So thanks for doing this, uh, Miss and Tracy. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. You're very welcome. And really, thank you all. This is, this is truly what the collaborative is about. We have to collaborate, we are collaborating. You know, we talk about um, what now has been a month ago and how quickly we all had to pivot and be responsive. Now we're all living in this space and producing new content, challenged by how that works, challenged by our own operational needs so that we can be supportive with D to DCPS. We can get into that in a little bit, but, um, I like this idea of keeping, uh, keeping the flow of conversation going. Maybe we can do a little popcorn spitballing conversation around brainstorming services for the new school year, what that can look like. Let's pick Mary's brain now uh, while they're just starting to think about that so we all can be responsive now as well as into planning for next school year. Um, the DC Collaborative, as you know, uh, did put out a pretty rapid response survey to y'all, asking what your needs were, what you were working on, um, what was a month, which now feels like a year ago. Boy, wasn't a month ago very different. I think we were all just kind of waking up from what this is going to be, our new reality. We're all in it now, so um, just know, be on the lookout. The Collaborative will be sending another survey very soon. Uh, but this, maybe we should dedicate some time, as I said, to kind of brainstorming, popcorning some ideas for fall planning now. Um, but I would love to hear from some more members that may have some things to share for Mary, uh, just like Paul did. Hey, Mary, this is Ingrid Zimmer from Inner City Inner Child. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so Mary, we, we reached out to the teachers um, who participated in Inner City Inner Child Early Childhood Residencies this year. We wanted to create content for them based on content that we had already introduced so it would be familiar to the kids. Um, and we kind of surveyed them about the best way to get information back to the families. And they pretty much all said YouTube videos. We, we offered live Zoom classes, um, but they seem, everyone seemed to say YouTube videos was the way that co content was being passed back to families. Is that still the case? I agree. Um, if, and you know, now that the DCPS videos are on YouTube as well, it makes me think that maybe the next iteration, and this might be something that Lissa already has in mind, is to have the DC Collaborative database then become a DC Collaborative family engagement channel on YouTube mm -hmm. where everybody can put, like if you wanna do music videos, if you wanna do dance, if you wanna do whatever it may be. And, and even if there's a way to make them charged videos, like you have to pay $1.99 to download it or something for those of you that wanna try and reap some, some uh, funds <laughs> back from it, maybe that could be something that could help fuel the industry a little bit, uh, especially looking at the summer. How are we creating online summer camps and how can we facilitate that for partners? Yeah, that's, that's a great point, Mary. Um, and Trey is on our database guru here. Uh, we're going to look at how we can continue to pivot with that database and having more family engagement opportunities through summer makes a lot of sense. Um, Trey, do you want to share some ideas that might be bubbling up for you as you're hearing that? Um, 
thinking off the top of my head, I don't have a, a ton of ideas. I think one of the things that we're looking for right now is how to best engage just more sectors of students. I think that, you know, us internally, we've talked about special eds and we've uh, special ed groups and we've talked about um, students with different languages. And so I think for us right now, we're figuring out how to best accommodate for that. Um, I think that the, the database as it stands currently has so many different resources, over 120 now, and that's only as a thanks to all of you for submitting those digital resources to us so that we can upload them to the, to the platform. Um, but I think still kind of like Lissa was saying, as things continue to change and grow and over the summer, you know, as we uh, see things maybe changing around a bit for, for schools as they're starting earlier, as maybe in the fall when field trips are not as um, prevalent, we're not sure if, you know, when schools start up, you know, field trips may not start again until October or November or December. We just, we don't know. And so one of the things that we have been looking at is how we as a collaborative can best, oops, sorry, my dog is right here. Um, say hi, Cairo. Uh, <laughs> we've been looking at how we can best, oh, that's my ear, boo, boo Sit down. We've best been looking at how to uh, create opportunities for, um, you know, so that we can make it easier for all of you to reach students digitally for digital field trips. Um, and so whether that's us setting up a platform where you receive a link and our teachers and classes receive a link and then all you have to do is click it and then your program goes on as planned um but then the students are already there somehow just digitally so that we're still having field trips but just at a distance um and through our, our digital platforms and so that's something that we have been exploring and that might be coming through like a google classroom type platform um or through some other secure um platform because i know that a lot of you are concerned about copyright um and making sure there's just a way to track which students and teachers are a part of your programming. Um, and so that is something we're exploring. I'm not sure if they answered your questions completely, but that is just some of the things off the top of my head. Thanks for sharing that, Trey. Um, yes, and Cairo, she's adorable. Okay. <laughs> She'll be helping. I did, get that. I I did have something that a little piece of good news that I would like to share. Um, about our programming at the Avalon is we've been searching and searching for films that we could offer that wouldn't um, be a cost to students because obviously that would rule out that possibility. And our final film for the school year was to be Chasing Coral. And we just learned, our program director has been working with the distributor, that uh, the distributor or the people behind Chasing Coral has convinced Netflix to allow that film to be available at no cost on YouTube, speaking of YouTube. So we do have a study guide um, that we will, that we can send out. So, and maybe, maybe I have to talk about this, whether we could get like a Zoom interview of me with a, with a guest that we have had in the past and be able to offer that, you know, not only to those you know, involved with Cinema Classroom at the Avalon, but really to anybody in the school system who might be able to use that as part of their curriculum right now. And maybe other films will follow, which would be fantastic. Daddy! Go ahead, Nadia. Hi. Um, hello. Uh, so, um, Gala, Hispanic Theater has been working on uh, a story time series that we're making available on YouTube via an unlisted link. I'm going to send that to the collaborative so you can have that on your database this week. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that on my end that it was going the way that I wanted it to go before I submitted it and it seems like it's going well now. What it is is a series of story time readings available through the end of June. Um, of books that are all in Spanish. And then every week there's a theme, you know, whether it's, you know, self-compassion or uh, immigration, um, even like death and grief in, for, it, of storybooks, you know, uh, for children ages four through nine, that's our target audience. Um, and within our small circle, it's, um, the, the um, response has been really good. 
which I think is good right now. Like I feel like we're really um, on overload on digital content. So I want to make sure that whatever it is that Gala is putting out is that like we have a target audience and that we are not just putting stuff out for the sake of putting stuff out. Because I know all of us are feeling like, oh my gosh, what do we do in this moment? Like we got to crank out all this content and we're putting pressure on ourselves. But I think that sort of focused you know, task of this is what we want to do has been really helpful over the last two weeks when we started this project. And um, if anybody want to, wants to reach out to me about it, um, I'll put my email in the chat box and, we, and I can get you all of those resources. Um, and something that I uh, wanted to bring up while um, Mary, especially while Mary was on the phone and we have so many members here, um, Lissa referenced that we're going to be sending out um, a membership survey about what services you'd like to see moving forward. Um, we're having um, a lot of internal meetings. Um, Trey, Clarissa, um, Trey, Clarissa and I met last week. So now normally the DC Collaborative has its schedule completely set for next year. All of our like policy documents, MOUs, and school partnership agreements are done. Um, but we weren't able to do that this year because we don't really know. Um, I mean, for obvious reasons, we don't really know what the schedule for next year is going to be like. Um, so uh, we're planning to delay everything a little bit to give us some time to pivot. Um, but if next school year doesn't happen, um, at a, uh, like, and field trips don't happen until December or maybe even the winter lottery, um, just wanted to bounce some ideas off of you guys while we have this time and while we have <laughs> Mary on the phone. Um, so, Ray, and if you want to jump in at any point to to clarify or further explain please explain, please do oh, thank you um so the we thought about um virtual field trips of course um where the dc collaborative um would facilitate a partnership we can contract with videographers um, help facilitate pre or post workshops to go along with the experiences as well as virtual professional development for teachers, um, even family programming where there's post experiences where children lead their parents through the vir a virtual experience similar to their tour. Um, and we can encourage partnerships with teaching artists to deliver PD or the virtual workshop experience. Um, so it's just like the Arts and Humanities for Every Student program, but except it, we won't be booking transportation, we'd be contracting with videographers. So we talked about that a little bit internally. Um, everything would still be connected to curriculum, um, but just wanted to hear um, your feedback on that um, idea first. It's kind of an open forum, so if someone wants to chime in. Or Trey, do you have Hi, any? everybody. Okay. This is Linda Maxwell, oh Anacostia God. Community Museum. Um, I was wondering, Will, because I know DC collaboratives sometimes promote our programs. Like if I have a teacher's PD or that sort of thing or a program, are you still looking at that capacity when you come back in the fall? Like we can, like if we're right now, we're planning an online series called Take Time Tuesday, Take Time Thursdays, where we're connecting with local artists, health experts, and that sort of thing to, to talk about how COVID-19 has affected their art and that sort of thing. And so I was- so I was wondering, will you all, like if we do an online program, could we kind of connect with you and, and post it on your website? Is that still a possibility? Yes. Okay. A short yeah. answer, yes. Um, that would be um, something that we would um, definitely be looking for. Um, and I like hey. that you're partnering with local artists as well. That group needs a lot of support. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, that's something that we could just put on the database 
um, Linda, that's, that would be perfectly fine. Okay, thanks. That's great. That's great to know. Thanks. And I'll put uh, this I, out there too. Um, because of licensure needs and things like that, teachers might be looking for PD uh, once we sort of relax from the classes and we're getting towards the end of the school year going into summer. Um, the teachers who need PLUs for their licensure might be looking for PD. So um, that's something that we could organize and send out uh, in an email to teachers to have one central location for them to find all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. I think if we all, uh, the, all of us that are uh, producers of PD and are able to uh, shift some focus on that, the summertime might be a really good time to, to do that. And we at the collaborative can promote that uh, similar to how our office catalog has looked in the past, knowing that it's going to look very different as we move forward. But, um, and, and certainly now, adding on to this really robust distance learning database that we've created. But that's exactly the role of the collaborative. We will help to market those opportunities as we always have. Um, but this is exactly why we need these community conversations. Like now we should be all thinking about setting our bigger calendar and thinking about the summer as a good time to offer PD for teachers mm -hmm. as one. Um, Sorry, this is Addie from the Women's Museum. I actually have a question for Mary about that. We just decided a couple of, of weeks ago to cancel our on-site teacher professional development, which typically takes place in July. So we're trying to pivot and think about ways we can offer online professional development. Mary, um, can you, is there, from the PLU end of things, is there a, like sort of an updated document or just any information that would help us develop sort of in this new in this new world like um programming that will accomplish the the plus that the teachers are expected to to sort of check off their list sure um there is a one pager on that on the aussie website i'll see if i can find it and send it out and send it to melissa to, to distribute to um uh so um, but I, for the most part, PLUs, it's really just more that as long as we've all agreed upon that it is actual professional learning and that mm -hmm. teachers aren't just sitting there chatting kind of mentality, then um, it, it should be fine. Great. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Mary, if you could forward that to, to Tracy, uh, we'll, we'll take care of that uh, and make sure that that gets incorporated into our messaging for everyone. Will do. Thank you. Anyone else have uh, some thoughts, ideas around PD or other questions they want to share? Uh, well, we've got Mary here. Well, we know we have to think about planning for summer as well as what our new fall will look like. In a similar vein, I do have something I wanted to ask. Um, so uh, on our town hall last Friday with teachers, we noticed that a, a pretty common thread was that they were all extremely stressed out. Um, and it was something that, you know, when we're not going into the schools and not seeing them face to face, we don't get that pulse point as easily as uh, we used to. So I was wanting to do something special for our teachers, whether it is, I don't know, people saying thank you or, I don't know, finding somebody to sing them a song on one of our town halls, just something that I can, um, you know, give them a little feel good moment. So if you have any ideas, please let me know, or if you have any uh, resources uh, that could help with that, I, I would love any ideas, please. That's a great idea. Um, the DC Collaborative has been participating uh, most of these town hall conversations mostly to help promote the great work of you all, of our members through that distance learning database portal. And what we really wanna look at now is making sure that those curricular connections are viable and work with not just uh, week seven and eight, but eight and nine for, through the end of this school year. Uh, so I know that the collaborative team has been speaking to Lindsay Vance about that, but any social, emotional, well-being, feel good, opportunities that we as a community can share with the teachers, I think that would be, that would make us feel really good too. Um, so if there's anyone that has some ideas, even things that we would do for the kiddos that would be part of 
the offerings of your organization that um, help promote the work you do, but also help the teachers. Maybe, Mary, what we could do is when the DC Collaborative has its little time slot to talk about the distance learning database, it could also feature one of our members. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah? Yeah, sure. that would be, I think that would be good, Lissa. Or like, I know one thing that we have been working on, um, and hopefully, hopefully can run out, run, have it running soon. It's just like a teacher spotlight um, for those teachers who have been using the database. Um, and we're planning on conducting interviews with those teachers just to see how they're using it and how they are continuing to um, support and maintain arts and humanities education even while distance learning. So that's something that we, we really do want to highlight because we do think that the teachers should be highlighted um, for the work that they're doing um, and how that they have how they've been pivoting to adjust to distance learning, especially for the arts and humanities, since it is very different to teach theater or dance or music over Zoom than it is to teach math or science or literature. And so we want to highlight the extra steps that those arts and humanities teachers are taking um, to do just that. And during one of our teaching artists practitioner Zoom chats, um, someone, uh, Sylvia Zui, actually, I don't know if she's on today. She came up with an idea about doing a teaching artist showcase. Um, so that might be, I mean, we can either um, do it like for your YouTube channel or something and um, have the lens of thanking teachers, Mary. Um, or we can have a like virtual happy hour on here um, where uh, teachers can um, see demos from teaching artists or something like that that's after school, um, not to make them commit to more time <laughs> in, in a, a Zoom chat meeting, but um, I think the teaching artist showcase was kind of a cool idea. Um, and teacher appreciation week is coming up at the beginning of next month, so. Um, Maybe we can do it during that week or something. That's a great idea during the teacher appreciation week, especially. Yeah, it'll be the first week of May before you know it. Um, so we definitely should all pull our resources together to do something um, for that. But also setting up a YouTube channel specific to this work that could be attached and affixed to our distance learning database makes a lot of sense. So we could have a repository of all those videos as well. Um, but that's something I'll leave to our team to, to sort out the best way to approach that. Um, anyone else have some, some ideas or, or thoughts around uh, what else we could be doing? to support our teachers and their emotional well-being as we're working on our own. <laughs> well, this is um, Monica and I saw an interesting letter. I know we're talking about teachers, but parents are also being impacted in a major way. And it was a cute little letter that read something like this. Um, Thank you for everything that you're doing. Don't worry about the lessons. Don't worry about getting online. Um, everybody's gonna come back to school all on different, you know, tiers. Don't worry about getting ahead or losing or being behind. Just focus on taking care of your child and, you know, reducing any kind of trauma-like experiences. And we'll, you know, they'll be in good hands when they return. Kind of a relief of, cause you have some parents who are out there trying to check off every box. You have other parents out there that don't even know where the box is. So, you know, the stressors around that um, on the parent um, is significant. And if there's a way that we can do something to alleviate, you know, the parent as well as, as the teacher, I think that um, that would be, be good. The second thing I wanted to add was they have teaching critical thinking through the arts. I think it's at the National Gallery of Arts where you're able to go onto a platform and you know, virtually experience um, the art, but then there are questions, a series of questions that really promote critical thinking. And I think it's gonna be important while art in its purest form is good, it's gonna be important to have a lot of the um, cross connections. And even if it's not a specific um, course like English literature or mathematics, 
um, the importance of problem solving um, needs to kind of be, I think, on top. As long as they're using those, uh, you know, their brains to uh, to improve their problem solving capacity, critical thinking, um, I think that'll go a long way um, as they return to the classroom. Yeah, that's what I really love about your your process and project with the Abacus Project, Monica, because it it's math, but it's also it's it's all about um, critical thinking. That's so directly attached to social emotional learning right now, right? So it's very important to help help the kiddos pivot that way, and and certainly for the teachers too. Anyone else have some ideas they'd like to share? Any questions for Mary that might help you in, in coming up with new ideas to share? Uh, hi, everyone. This is Karen Brown. Good morning. Uh, Mary, I love the idea of reaching out to the teachers. And quick question, would it be to the art teachers or the um, specials teachers or to all teachers? I'm sorry, trying to unmute quickly, <laughs> didn't work out. Um, so okay. uh, I, I'm definitely more thinking of, of the art specific teachers just because they're in my direct reach, but I think it would be wonderful to have something for everybody. Um, everyone that knows me on this, in this group knows that I uh, get so emotional about my teaching and about a lot of things, but I've been struck by, and maybe it's my social worker um, psychology background, but I've been struck by my conversations with all types of teachers and parents in the last five weeks that the emotional is the part that we need to support first and foremost. And all of you have been saying that, so um, we're in total agreement. I also think that if there's something where we could create a platform for teachers separately and parents, perhaps it's already there, but to have uh, a platform where, where they could weigh in and um, create a positive environment for feedback and sharing, you know, a, a, maybe a private Facebook group or um, uh, Instagram. And then the other thing, Mary, for reaching out to the teachers and Monica to the parents, um, and we're so concerned about our parents, I. I know that I'm book obsessed, but I wonder if there's a way to create a journaling program where families, teachers and families and their own families could just start writing out and not worry about spelling, not worrying about content, but just writing out about their feelings. Because I've been reading from several artists around the world how important it is to record what we're going through because we're going to get through this and we're, we're not going to always remember all the details of what we're going through. So um, if, if that's helpful at all, it's an offering. I would love to work on that. That's a great idea, Karen. Um, we're, yeah, we're doing it for the students through the artwork that we're creating um, in the lessons. Uh, I would say one of the hard things is reaching everybody. Yes. Um, uh, you know, like we surveyed our teachers in the last town hall, we had maybe 90 participants on the last one, which is about the average out of 311 teachers, we had 90. Um, and that's a good turnout. <laughs> Usually the only time we get all of them is at the in-person PDs. But uh, we re uh, surveyed them to see how many of their students are actually engaging. Uh, whether by phone, online, whatever it may be, and at most they were saying 20%. So, um, you know, that, that, that ability to reach the kids and to reach the parents and the, the teachers is, is difficult. Um, and so maybe that idea of the Facebook or the Instagram is the best way. Um, there is a, a survey being done through DCPS, but um, it is, it's a formal survey. It's not just an online talk forum. And um, a, a curious question, I mean, a question to Mary and to the whole group. I was on the phone with a friend who works for the Postal Service, and he's on the COVID response team. 
And I'm just curious, is DCPS able to medically send out packages or letters at this point? I, I don't know where we stand with safety on that. And the safety first, and then there's, of course, the budgeting aspect of it. Right, yes. Um, so we have, there's a, a variety of things in that. Um, so we have to make sure that any vendor that we're using is using proper protocol. Okay. Um, it, uh, right now, we can't have anything sent directly to the warehouse or to schools for that purpose. Um, so, you know, when I was mentioning earlier that we had a grant to get keyboards, one of the problems was is that they had to be delivered directly to the students' homes. Um, and then making sure that we are finding that vendor who is using the right protocol, um, and then making sure that parents understand that they're receiving a package um, and, and to take the right precautions from there once they receive it, just like you would if you ordered something from Amazon or went to the grocery store. Um, uh, so there's not a, a definite no, you can't send anything, but they are asking that we make sure we cover all, all sides of it and make sure everyone's knowledgeable of it. Okay, thank you all. Mm -hmm. Can I just add something quickly about journaling? This is Kathy Crutcher from Shout Mouse Press. Hello, everybody. We are a writing and publishing program dedicated to amplifying underheard voices. And certainly um, our youth voices during this crisis are underheard. So we have for our own authors been doing a shout in place prompt series. And we are, um, opening that up to the public on starting on Wednesday. I guess put some details in the chat box. But um, we send out a weekly prompt um, for young people, um, helping them to process and record and even find some joy um, as able in these experiences. Uh, anyone can submit starting on Wednesday um, with hashtag shout in place, or uh, you can also send an email and I'll put that email address up soon. We are going to do something with these entries uh, at the end of all this. We are normally a book publishing organization, so we may well end up um, creating a book out of DC Youth Voices during the COVID crisis. So, um, and if not a book, then a magazine article or something along those lines. So. If, um, if you think your young people or teachers would be interested in spreading the word, here, there it goes, shout in place. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Kathy, that's, that's a great idea and what a cool project. I think uh, I immediately thought of Farid and our friends over at Pulitzer. I would love to see Everyday DC and, sh and shout, uh, wait, I just lost the acronym, sorry. Oh my God, my brain. Help me. Stay. Shout in place. Shout in place. Thank you. Oh yeah. No, no worries. But I love that idea of perhaps collaboration. And you guys know collaboration well. I remember one of your projects was actually the result of some networking that happened at a collaborative meeting with another member. So um, it would be great because then there would be a way to promote both of those opportunities and then to have it documented after would be fabulous. So I love that idea. Shout in place, love it. Anyone else have something to share? An idea for collaboration? Okay. Um, well, I think this was really helpful to hear a bit more from you all. Uh, because we, we do, these, do have these conversations every uh, weekday for the purpose of bringing our community together and especially on Mondays to help support DCPS um, and for us to use all of our resources and strengths uh, to help students and teachers and to help ourselves. So I do think the big theme coming out of this I'm feeling is increased need for uh, social emotional support for our teachers, for our parents, for ourselves, for the students, um, and knowing that the arts are the best vehicle for this, and that's what we do. Um, the full schedule Tracy just put up for our Zoom chats 
is, uh, is right in the chat right now. So please join us this week for more conversations. Um, but if there aren't any other questions or ideas that folks would like to shout out, last call, as they say. I'm gonna jump in real quick with just a question. I was a little late, so maybe it was already answered. Does Mary or anyone else have any sort of, has there been any sort of talk in DCPS about, about next year in terms of what they're thinking or in terms of field trips? Um, and I only ask because we're in a place now, we actually plan our season now and our brochure usually goes, to, the school year brochure usually goes to the printer in June. So we're kind of in a place of do we, safely assume there won't be field trips in the fall? Like, is that even talked about yet or on anyone's, um, anyone's radar at DCPS? It is being talked about at a, a higher level than my pay grade. Um, but <laughs> nothing is really being told to us because I think as with everything that we've gone over in the last month, everything is done and, and ready to pivot uh, at such a moment's notice that, um, Everything that we're doing on my team for looking into next year is with three or more plans of what could happen. Um, and just being ready to, as, as Lisa said, pivot at any moment on that. On that. So, and I know that's not the answer that you want, I'm sorry, but uh, unfortunately I think that is gonna be our reality for the next year. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Yeah, Sarah, and I'll just jump in on that from the DC collaborative side. We know, especially uh, because we help to coordinate so many field trips during the school year. Um, on a good year, it's reaching about 50,000 students collectively. Um, I think for us, we're in the same position because we are responsive to what, what we're hearing from, D what we will hear from DCPS, what we're hearing from you all, what we hear from the commission. It's so fluid right now. For those of you that are DAHI grantees and are pushing your field trips into the new school year optimally, we hope that can happen. But one of the things that we also know and why it's helpful for everyone to stay connected and to really lean on collaborative for this information too, is we know that other stakeholders that we haven't even brought into this conversation are directly impacted by what's happening and it's going to directly impact our ability to have field trips even if we know we can be operational open our doors let's say in September for field trips and we're talking about the bus vendors um, a lot of these DC approved vendors are going to have different fleets different types of demands and ability come fall so it's really important for all of us to be working together to figure out as we pivot, knowing it's going to be pretty swift pace, uh, that we have to factor in a lot of things and considering dates. Um, because also we know that there could be a glut of dates similar to something we had happen in March in the best of times, where we had almost every theater program that was focusing on uh, programming for middle school students producing content at the same time. And that created a glut and a bit of a cog in the operation of, of how we equitably get learning opportunities out to the community. And we want everyone to be poised for success as best as possible, but it is such a difficult uh, landscape to navigate right now. So like, we all just have to stay in touch. And I know that really screws up people's planning and planning ability, especially in theater, right? Because you, you don't pivot that fast. <laughs> you have to factor a lot of things into your work. Um, but it is just our, it is our reality now. So we'll continue to have these conversations with you and continue to ask because it's going to change all the time. Well, thank you for sharing that, Sarah, because that is a very important point for us when we think about planning for, the, for what the fall or August start potentially looks like. Um, anyone yeah, else? I think it would just be good to know if, if you know, virtual field trips are something that teachers would be down for and it, it sounds like you're willing to kind of help because then we hope mm -hmm. enough now that we could you know have either a side-by-side -side option where you either come to the theater or you book it virtually yeah. um, just try to go all virtual for the first couple of months yes. over our heart anyway because it's the beginning of the school year um yeah. so we're early enough that we can we can pivot it just i hate to put out a whole season and then have to backtrack and cancel after it's already gone out so yeah. I think, Sarah, you just laid out the, the safest roadmap, and that is for fall to look at a virtual live option. 
because even if schools are opening and functioning and even if there was transportation available and you have the funds available and we have the buses available, there still may be schools that are going to elect to not take their students out of the class. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, we're, and you're already hearing this in theater, there've been so many articles in the news about what does the audience look like when you're able to open your stages up again? You know, at best, on a pulse survey I saw and from one of our media outlets, it was a third of people said they'd be willing to go if theater opens up again. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just what our reality is. So I think that planning for the fall, you should be looking at virtual live recordable performances that we can get out to the schools knowing that that's probably what the majority of those experiences will look like. To yeah. add on to um, what Lissa said in our um, educator distance learning um, needs assessment, I, I believe virtual field trips were requested um, the most, that was the most popular category. And in our um, equity conversations that occur on Friday, the um, consensus from at least the special education teachers that were on the call was that virtual field trips would be really helpful for students with special needs too. Um, so that was mentioned last last Friday as well. Um, so I, um, I think we'll need to do a, another needs assessment because it was done at the very beginning of all of this and teachers needs might look very different um, now or at the start of next school year. Um, but at least preliminarily, um, virtual field trips were among the most requested um, types of resources. And I think we can really lean on the theater community to help support other organizations. I mean, let's think about how we can collaborate. Uh, you know, Uncle Devin last week did a great Tech Tuesday and kicked us off on this idea of how to make ourselves tech ready. You know, some of the most simplistic things that we don't think about, like making sure your camera is on a stable base if you don't have a tripod, but also just what, what does this look like? And as I shared at the beginning of our conversation, I know that our friends at Smithsonian Natural History are thinking a lot about this as they have to create programming now and produce content. Um, and one great idea is to lean on DC theater community for support and that could become collaborations that could help promote the work of your houses, the work of your actors and company, your educators too, um, just to help people be camera or virtual ready and respond. So the work that you're producing is engaging in this new medium that we're not as familiar with as perhaps the folks in theater are, just a thought. Um, but something that I think is going to be very important as we're looking at more of our work pivots moving forward. Yeah. So a lot more to unpack there and a lot more for us to work on for sure. But again, all roads are leading to uh, collaboration and more of it. So um, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. It is 12 o'clock. I guess Mr. Markey uh, was not able to join us today, but we had such a robust conversation. Um, that you know, we'll we'll certainly um, we'll share we'll share that we missed David, but I think that uh, we got a lot of useful to, a needed uh, conversation out today, and this is really what the collaborative hopes that these community conversations can be about. Um, so, Mary, as always, thank you for joining us on Mondays, and thank you for continuing to share what you know, and for all of us to figure out how we can best support you and your team and the parents and teachers and students, most importantly. Um, so again, uh, any ideas that you have, please send them our way or reach out to Mary. Um, but if there isn't anything else to share, I will just say everyone have a good day. Take some time to take care of yourselves. And thank you for this conversation. This was a very good conversation today. Thanks everyone, be well. It was nice talking to you. Thank you.